All right, this, uh, if you guys can hear us out there, uh, please let us know. And then we'll start the broadcast, man. I, I, mean, I can hear myself here on the uh, the uh, external monitor here. So, can you guys hear us out there? All right. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started here. What's up, guys? Um, this is Ty Zen, and uh, with me today, while Bitcoin is hitting all-time highs, it's uh, finally broke above $5,000, $5,200 today. This is a, a momentous occasion for all of us in the crypto community. So I wanted to celebrate this special occasion by bringing on a very special guest here. We have Mr. Levi here. Uh, say hello, Levi, and introduce yourself, man. The way that you do it on your channel. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to do it the way that you do it on your channel so that people can get a taste of who you are, man. Okay, let's do it then. So, yeah. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Levi Ellis here. Thanks again for watching, and welcome to my new subscribers. If you're new to my channel, I'm trying to bring you cryptocurrency news in the entertainment kind of way <laughs> for you to digest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Tyson, my man. How are you? Uh, doing great, man. Uh, so, what do you think about? Uh, let's, let's start by. What do you think about this? Uh, um, this um, uh, uh, all-time Bitcoin highs, man. Uh, all, you know, it's finally above fifty-two hundred dollars as we're speaking. Uh, it's at fifty-two seventy-three right now as we're speaking. It's you know? amazing. It's amazing. I was actually ready to pop up some champagne. When was it? Yesterday or the day? Be it wasn't yesterday. I, I'm a little bit sick also and I got a little bit of a cold, but I guess it was yesterday. And uh, I was like, okay, patience, patience. But now it's uh, finally there. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's exciting. It's far more, how do you say it, faster than expected in my opinion. So uh, yeah, let's see where it's heading from here. I, I guess okay. uh, we can still hit like 6,350 before the end of the year, around that range. Okay, okay. <laughs> hey, uh, just, just, just uh, real quick, uh, I just want to make sure that uh, uh, the audience, hey, can you guys let me know if, um, uh, can, can you guys let me know that when I'm speaking, you guys can see me on the screen, and when Levi is speaking, that he's on the screen, because uh, for some reason I cannot tell if uh, each of us uh is showing up on the screen when we are talking uh the google hangout is supposed to detect uh who's speaking and put them on the screen so if that's working correctly please let me know in the chat box if it's not working correctly let me know also okay so um i guess the market heard that you were coming on to our channel so it started to rally up you know and break the new highs man what do you think <laughs> <laughs> no 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 that could not be the case <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think I think you're the one that's moving the markets, man. You know, word got out that you're gonna uh, be on our channel, man. But uh, yeah. who knows? Right? Who knows? Uh, uh, I think okay, so working. Yeah. hey, so uh, just uh, just to give uh, our audience a little background on on, um, can you talk a little bit about how you got into crypto? You know, and when you first heard about Bitcoins and, and then uh, can you talk about that first? Yeah, yeah, sure. So I think it was around 2013. I was working for Johnson & Johnson back then and I was uh, driving in my car and uh, back then I was um, mainly into stocks. I've been into stocks since uh, 2010 or so. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm running my own company and at a certain point of time you have enough uh, liquidity or uh, company capital and you need to do something about, with it so um, yeah I was driving the car listening to some financial news uh, radio uh, radio set I don't call them, I don't know the English word radio let's say and then at a certain point of time they were talking about this Bitcoin and that it hit it uh, 1,000 or so I was like what what is this and then I started uh, to not give it a lot of attention because they were also saying, you know, the usual suspect kind of things like it's only being used on Silk Road and blah, 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 blah. So at a certain point of time in, uh, when was it? Um, uh, 2016, yeah, just only last year. 
some of my friends were saying, hey, are you already into a cryptocurrency? There is this Dutch cryptocurrency called Gulden, and it has, uh, how do you say it, risen to 1,500%. And I was like, what? What the hell is going on here? And that that's why I started, let's say, getting into what it is all about. And then um, I, I came across, let's say, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Monero in the beginning, and Dash. Those were the four, the first four coins that uh, caught my interest. And then at a certain point of time, I uh, yeah started to invest more heavily in it, but only in the beginning of the year. I mean, if you invest in something, you really need to invest you know, with good due diligence and um, especially with something so intangible. So, um, yeah, I took really the time to, to dive into it for uh, almost a year to, to, to really start. I, I played around a little bit, very difficult in the beginning with all those uh, private keys and all that. I also lost some Bitcoins here and there, some Moneros <laughs> along the way. But then that, that's the way you need to learn, right? And, um, yeah. You know, yeah, I always say it's just pretty much everyone learns by trial and error, you know, uh, by uh, in, in crypto, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And hey, just real quick, man, I forgot to let everyone know that I'm broadcasting from uh, Dallas, from the city of Dallas, which is located in the state of uh, Texas. Where, where are you broadcasting from right now? I'm, I'm broadcasting from the Netherlands. Eindhoven, the gekste, we say here. <laughs> <laughs> It's like the, the freaks from Eindhoven. I don't know if it's the correct, uh, how do you say, translation. But uh, yeah, I'm temporarily here in Eindhoven at the moment. I'm originally from another uh, part of the Netherlands, southwest. It's called Middelburg. has been big in the, in the golden ages. Now it's just a village. But I'm broke. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Hey, uh, you know, cities, uh, uh, cities and nations grow and die, man. You know, and uh, exactly. they have their peak moments and they have their low moments, you know. So. Exactly. Once you know, upon and that's a time. No, yeah, yeah, once upon a time, you know, there's no, that's no different in crypto land, you know. Uh, some coins make it big and then some fall off, you know, and the key is yeah. to, to grab a piece of the action while it's going up, you know. So. Exactly, exactly. Once upon a time, also the, the Dutch Gilder or the Florine, they called it back in the days, was a world currency for 250 years. And now it's crap. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so was the... Uh, yeah, so, so so was the Iraqi dinar, you know, when Saddam Hussein was in power, you know. Exactly. So, exactly. And now it's just a, it's a toilet paper is more valuable, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but so hey, uh, so so talk about how so you you got into crypto while working for Johnson and Johnson, right? And what what's your background? Do you have like an IT background or what's a, a... yeah? So I'm a, I'm a, a online marketing specialist and my. Uh, a generalist, I always say, and my expertise is uh, marketing automation. So okay. I help, yeah, prepare from a strategy perspective, but also let's say operational perspective. So I I help customers uh, to to build out their uh, strategy for you know lead management, uh, retention, and all this uh, type of stuff. So that's what I'm doing for my company as well. So um, uh, I, I'm delivering consultancy services and mainly focusing on uh, Fortune 500 companies. So now I'm currently working for Philips. Uh, already long term, <clears throat> I think it's the sixth year now that I'm doing uh, different assignments there for Philips on a global scale, Philips Lighting in this case. I've also done the work for Royal Philips. And then also some, you know, national, um, you know, larger companies like the Dutch Telegraph, but also in the in the sporting sector. So it's a little bit of uh, of that, yeah. But I'm actually planning to quit end of the year. So, uh, oh, man, that's good news, <laughs> man. So basically... Basically, you're one of those real Asians that's actually uh, smart and all that stuff, man, unlike myself. <laughs> yeah. And that is also so, a little bit where my passion came from for, for blockchain technology. It's, it's all about, let's say, digital info, uh, innovation and transformation. That's what, what my passion is, and that's why I also like blockchain. Okay. So what, uh, so what inspired you to start the uh, crypto edutainment channel uh, when... Uh, you got into crypto, started doing well, and then, and then what inspired you to start your own YouTube channel? Because originally when we started, it was because to help our friends and family and colleagues and coworkers, because we got tired of explaining what Bitcoin was over and over and over. So I decided to make some videos and start a channel. And it was more, even though the videos were made public, it was more private so that we can share. It. So leonfood.com and I can share it with you know, yeah. the people around us. And then they started to grow from there. What, what inspired you to start your channel? Yeah, so uh, initially, initially, um, 
I was doing cloud mining. You might think I'm crazy. I, I you are crazy, man. Anybody that does cloud mining is crazy. Ah, my, my I, opinion there. I, I fall for that scam. I fall for that scam. But that's also what I did right now. You know, so I started with um, how do you say it? Uh, with cloud mining. Now I was looking about. Uh, I was looking for Genesis mining and all that stuff. And I was. I wanted to know whether it was legit or not. So at a certain point of time. Um, if you go on YouTube, there was only one guy that <clears throat> back then it was talking about, and it was Trevon James. So uh, at the, <laughs> at the certain point of time, I saw that uh, that the only way to let's say generate, uh, let's say, um, keep up with the the hash rate was to get let's say affiliates and all that. So I thought, yeah, maybe that's also a good thing to do for me, just on the side. But then I was like. I don't even like to do this, to be honest, because my passion is talking about uh, blockchain in general. So at a certain point of time, I, um, I, I also made a decision like, you know, I wanted to do something that, um, how do you say, it? educate people, but in an entertaining way, because if I look on YouTube, everything is so serious. And as a person, I'm not that serious. Although I'm investing with some serious money, I say I'm a hobby investor, but it's all relative. I mean, in the end, I'm, I'm, I'm investing with six-figure numbers. And if I go in, uh, let's say, speculate on some new stuff, I, I go in with five-figure numbers and all that. But you know, I was like, there, there is not such a channel at this point of time that it is bringing it in that genre, you know? So that, yeah. that, that was the reason uh, that I did it in, that way, in this way. And uh, I had some personal circumstances why I had some, you know, extra time in the evenings. And now it's uh, it's uh, a hobby that exploded a little bit. But now, in the end, I'm going to stop work and I'm going to do this full time by the end of the year. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, we've met so many people in our journey uh, that mm -hmm. in our crypto journey that has done well for themselves and you know made some intelligent moves and and now they're able to quit their work. So I'm really happy to hear that. You know, so mm -hmm. and, and so, what was your like response after you started? Uh, uh, oh, but by the way, look, look, before I go into that question, you mentioned that uh, you learned from cloud mining that doesn't work, and you mentioned Genesis mining, right? Yeah, yeah. So was that the cloud mining service that you used? Yeah, 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 yeah. So in the okay. end, and, and so, so when you said that it did not work, right? You know, the whole idea of me bringing you and other uh, broadcasters onto our channel is yeah. to learn from the mistakes that you made, you know, so that our audience right. can learn from your mistakes as well, you yeah. know? And so yeah. what was the, the lesson that you learned from the cloud mining and from Genesis mining? Yeah, so uh, yeah, I also made a, a video on it or a series of videos. So where I really did an investigation over time and, um, and the use cases as follow. Um, uh, would you receive m more coins whenever you bought bit, uh, invest um, US dollars <laughs> for a certain amount versus buying bitcoins directly at the exchange. So that was the, the, the use case that I've done. And then uh, based on calculation, I, I, I'm showing that uh, it's not, uh, how do you say it, not uh, profitable at all to, uh, to just mine. It's better to just buy it via an exchange. Okay, so yeah. that is the exact firm belief that we have uh, yeah. on our team. Right, mm -hmm. because most people don't realize that you know I started learning about bitcoins back in 2012 when I worked at an energy brokerage firm in the city of Dallas, and they had a uh, a mining farm there. Mm -hmm. They were building a bitcoin mining farm, and that's how I learned about bitcoins, and that's how I sent the white paper to LeonFu.com, and he confirmed that yes, it's legit, and that's how we got into bitcoins at that time. Right, mm -hmm. so um, you know, eventually a few years later, they had to shut down their operations. Right. Um, so, uh, because it was just not profitable. Um, so since then we have never seen a scenario where it was more profitable to put your money into mining than to actually just buy the coins, the tokens itself. So if you start at the beginning of the year in 2017 and you put, you know, a hundred dollars into Bitcoin, you would have gotten way more for your money. You got, you would have grown it like four or five times versus putting a hundred dollars into mining or any yeah. kind of money whether it's, you know, you do the mining or you put it into cloud mining, it didn't matter. It, we've never seen a use case where mining made more money than just actually just buying and holding the coin. Yeah, right? I think it's really and the I'm, I'm going to interrupt for one moment 
and repeat, you know, uh, and quote uh, 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 the Bitcoin Meister, Adam Meister, the Bitcoin Meister, and tell everyone to pound that like button. <laughs> I can't say with as much enthusiasm as he does, though. So, <laughs> pound that like button. Pound that like button. Pound that subscribe button. You know. <laughs> okay. So now. Uh, I want to clear up some things, you know, with Genesis because there's a lot of uh, questions about Genesis mining, and you actually put money into yeah. cloud mining with Genesis. So you actually a, a yeah. former customer, a former user, right? I'm still I'm still a customer because it still goes on, but I do not invest anything in it anymore. Okay, so so do you recommend that to the audience, or do you recommend somebody do that? Because we've never seen, no. we cannot recommend it because we don't see it no. being more profitable. No, I, I would not recommend it, not at all, because. Uh, I, I, I will also uh, uh, send the series maybe later to you that you can put in the description because yeah. there is a series I really show you that at a certain point of time in January when the price of Bitcoin was uh, $1,000, then I could have accumulated more Bitcoins over time because what people do not take into account, there's also a difficulty increase. And all the calculations that you see on, on, on the internet, on Coin Wars or whatever other type of website, that is the the price that you will get over time, but not including the difficulty increase. So yeah. what I did, I really did my due diligence and looked at the history and took the average of difficulty increase that's coming from Bitcoin over time and calculated that in Excel sheets. And then, and then based on that, it's, it's better to just buy Bitcoin versus uh, mining. Except if, if now the price would rise like super crazy, of course, yeah, then uh, then it's a different story. No. Yeah. So uh, let, let me ask you this. So like a lot of people are asking, hey, is cloud mining a scam or not? You know, so what you're saying is that it's not that it's a scam. It's just not more profitable. Exactly. Uh, it's yeah. not as profitable as just investing in yeah. the coin, the token itself. I, exactly. It's not a scam. It's not a scam. I mean, it's, uh, it, it's, it's exactly what you are saying. And by the way, the screen is not switching uh, uh, over uh, uh, Tizen, from you to me and oh. first. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so, all right. As long as it's on you, it's fine. Um, so, um, let me see here. Okay. So, what um, next question I have for you is that if so, I also want to add to that. Okay. So, I was recently, uh, it was brought to my attention from a, uh, another a broadcasting colleague. Uh, about um, uh, Genesis, mm -hmm. right? And so we wanted to do some research on cloud mining, and we we, we wanted to be able to say definitively, you know, whether it's a scam, we uh, or not, you know, um, because we hear a lot about Genesis mining. So we actually reached out to. I contacted their customer service. I actually contacted their CEO. Uh, and when I say contact, I'm talking about like emails and things like that. Mm -hmm. And we actually sent our team, uh, uh, LeonFood.com. And um, and David uh, Fong, we actually sent them to Iceland to go and you know because on the on the Google Maps it says that Genesis Mining was at a certain location, and we actually sent them over there to Iceland to check it out. <laughs> you know, so you know moving forward, you know in 2017 and moving forward, we like to have boots on the ground when we invest in something. So yeah. we like to go there and inspect it and, and make sure that everything is legit. And one of the things that we discovered was that. We never got any contact back from them. Uh, no, no one responded. No, no yeah. one, no one said anything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, the, and then uh, we went over there. Our team went over there and looked at the Google uh, Maps where their headquarters or their facility was at. Now we didn't expect them to go there, and you know we didn't expect to go there, and they let us in. You know, because I'm sure it's a secured area. You know, there's going to be high security there and stuff because they got to protect their mining assets and their mining equipment and stuff. But when they actually got there to Iceland, they did not see any buildings or anything there where the Google Maps, you know, said that it was. So, um, and then the other thing too is that, uh, and then like a couple of days ago. Um, I got an email response back from Genesis Mining's customer service, and they said that they would not uh, uh, um, do the public tours or whatever, you know. And and so after that, we um, we just uh, we dropped the case because we, um, we we couldn't not conclude whether it was a scam or not. You know, we can conclude that it's not more profitable than investing in the token. But the thing that we were looking for was that, hey, is this a legit operation and blah, 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 and all that. And we were just, we have no, 
it's neutral about that because no one ever contacted us until we left Iceland. So yeah, yeah, all right, yeah, fair point. So yeah. okay, so let's um, let's uh, uh, switch gears here and get your thoughts on a few um, uh, controversial issues that's going on right now in, in in the crypto space and what your thoughts are on it and and how you know investors should view it to make money because this is an investing channel. This is not yeah. a technology channel. This is not a philosophy channel. This is how do we make money from the controversies that's going on, okay? So the first controversy is about, you know, the Bitcoin hard forks and all these baby Bitcoins that's being born, Yeah. you know, from, um, and then we got the, the, the Segwit2x coming up in November. What is your, what are your thoughts on it and how do you plan on responding to the, these events? Yeah, okay. With, with, with your portfolio, like, is there anything that you're going to do special or unique to your portfolio to respond to it? No, not necessarily. I mean, if you look at Bitcoin uh, gold and also uh, how it's being priced now on uh, on Bitfinex, it's it's not a significant value at the moment. Would you then uh, spend, let's say, that small percentage on extra Bitcoin to put there to gain some Bitcoin gold? And in the end, you can yeah can get better, let's say, gains with uh, other coins. So uh, no, I think uh, Bitcoin Gold. Uh, whenever I have them, I'm I'm just going to sell them. With regards to uh, Segwit Two X, um, to be honest, my opinion. Maybe people will disagree. Um, it might happen, but I think it's not going to happen. And if it's going to happen, it will die. And maybe people will think I'm crazy, but just to to look at it from an economical perspective. And if you look at Bitcoin Cash, um, Bitcoin Cash. Um, uh, has the bigger block sizes already? Why would you have, let's say, the Segwit 2x part with the with the smaller 2MB size? And the, uh, the 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 mining power is mainly coming from China, right? So uh, I I personally think that uh, that China is going to let's say just go for Bitcoin Cash or for uh, for for the normal bitcoin and of course they are giving the opportunity as well to mine for segment 2x but what are they going to do themselves and then i guess they are only going to choose for bitcoin or bitcoin cash okay so what uh, so you your your game plan is that you're not going to do anything no no uh, no no. Okay, because on, on our team, we're not like you know buying more bitcoins to get no. extra. Uh, <laughs> you know, like the, 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 that to me is just a bunch of bullshit. Like we're not gonna, we don't believe uh, in all these baby bitcoins diluting the value of bitcoin. Yeah, and, and I'm saying that from someone that doesn't even like. I have less than half a percent of bitcoin. I probably have like probably two or three bitcoins right now, at most. You know, and I'm saying that for the benefit of the bitcoin community. Is that I don't believe that that it's, it helps the, the value of Bitcoin when there's all these bullshit Bitcoins coming popping up. Yeah. Because that's just gonna confuse the public when they enter the market and, and to get mainstream adoption, we don't need confusion. We need uh -huh. okay. clarity that so that when somebody comes in, they know what Bitcoin is. We don't need somebody to come into the big the crypto community and go, hey, what's Bitcoin Cash? What's Bitcoin Dark? What's Bitcoin Segwit? What's Bitcoin? You know, uh, 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 gold. What's what's Bitcoin Core? That to me is nothing kills adoption faster than confusion. Okay. You know, so that, that's why you know we don't we don't make videos about them and, and, and discuss it because to me, I don't want to contribute to that confusion. Yeah, I agree. You know, so totally. yeah, and I'm not moving bitcoins around just to even if I had more bitcoins, I'm not going to move bitcoins around just to get a few bitcoin <laughs> no. cash or bitcoin gold. To me, that's bullshit. Yeah, I you agree. Know, I'm keeping it in cold storage and keeping it there, you know. Uh, what, those two bitcoins? Huh? <laughs> yeah, two bitcoins, my two bitcoins. <laughs> I'm lucky I even have two bitcoins right now. I'm, I'm like 99% in altcoins. So, you know, yeah. I, I'm, I'm just, the only time I keep bitcoins is if I need to get into an ICO or if I need to buy mm -hmm. other uh, uh, coins, you know. But the majority of the time it's in, uh, um, it's in, uh, um, all coins. All so, so um, okay. So that's uh, what about the uh, Ethereum hard fork that's coming up? What's your thoughts on that, and and how's that uh, affecting your uh, um, strategy to manage your portfolio? Well, I, I I started already selling off a lot of Ethereum. To be honest, I think I sold off already seventy five percent, but uh, before before the hard fork. But I still have a good position in uh, Ethereum. 
But the thing with Ethereum is, I'm a little bit um, skeptical about their, their, their scaling roadmap. At this point of time, they need, let's say, two different uh, metropolis hard forks to get to that ultimate scaling goal. And um, I'm just a little bit afraid, although, let's say, from, let's say, a corporate adoption perspective, they are uh, doing a good job with the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance. But uh, I think technologies will pop up left and right that will also uh, fix the scaling um, issue that Ethereum is facing um, on a shorter term and what will then happen over time, you know? So, um, yeah, it, it, it can be a little bit of a benefit, but uh, the, well, what is it? The, ma the major thing in the hard fork is that, uh, and please correct me if I'm wrong, is that, uh, how do you say it, the, the Ice Age thing? Will uh, will be uh, extended a little bit. Why? Why? If you know already that you're going to scale, put it in and go, go to the next step. You know. Okay. Yeah. So so I mean so you are not acquiring more ethers or getting rid of your ethers. You just you you you're on a whole track with that thing. Uh, I, yeah, I'm I'm just holding what I have right now. I'm just yeah, holding. I'm doing the same thing and. Yeah. A lot of people are asking, uh, you know, are concerned, is there going to be a hard fork? Uh, you know, after the hard fork, is there going to be a third Ethereum chain that's going to be produced? And my strongest opinion is that there won't be. And, and here's wow. the reason why, and maybe you can share your thoughts on it too, but my opinion is that the original hard fork to, to, to bail out the DAO, yeah. the reason why people kept, uh, the, there's a portion of the community did not believe in bailouts. Mm -hmm. They do not believe in bailouts, and that's why they stuck with Bitcoin, uh, 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 Bitcoin uh, um, uh, Classic, I mean, Ethereum Classic, mm -hmm. okay, because they did not believe in the bailouts. Now, I'm one of those people that, you know, did not believe in the bailouts either. Even though that's the position I lost the most money since I got into crypto, the, the project that I lost the most money on in terms of percentage-wise is, is the DAO. When I invested into it. So I lost a shitload of money on that. Lots. Okay. Um, so because of that, I, uh, but even then, even with the money, if you ask me, hey, Ty, would you take the losses and, 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 and maintain the immutability of the blockchain, of the Ethereum blockchain? I would say yes. You know, I'm willing to sacrifice my losses to maintain that immutability because that's what gives it value. So there was a community who believed that that, that was there, you know? You know, like, but then, you know, the, there's people that wanted their money back, so they had to do that hard fork. And so the, there was a bailout issue there. I don't believe that this hard fork is a bailout. When, when they go to hard fork to update the software, it's not a bailout. So I don't believe there's any reason why the community would splinter or split up into a third Ethereum blockchain. No, that's, 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 my, yeah, that, that's, that's my opinion because and, and right now, Bitcoin keeps splitting up because it does not have a governance process. There's no decision-making process. And when I say governance process, people that don't understand what a governance process is, they think that I am suggesting that Bitcoin needs a government, okay? A governance process is a decision-making process where the majority of people can come to a decision and then execute on that decision. It doesn't mean that it can involve the government, but it does not have to have a government. It's just a process, okay? Mm -hmm. And right now, Bitcoin does not have a governance process, but Ethereum does. And their, their governance process is what we call, we like to call the benevolent dictator model. So they're using Vitalik as the benevolent dictator, and he's going to dictate downwards, you know, what needs to be done with the, the, the network. And because he was the founder of the network, right? And people know that he's not motivated by money because he's already got gazillions of dollars, mm -hmm. right? So the decisions that he makes is going, people are going to trust his opinion. People that, like myself who are not technical, you know, we're going to trust that he's doing the right thing for his network, okay? So because of that, there is a very, that, that benevolent dictator model that, that flows downhill. I don't think there, I don't believe there's going to be a, uh, a third Ethereum hard fork chain. Mm -mm. No, so what's, what's your thoughts? No, I totally agree with you on that one, uh, Ty. But you know, I mean, hard fork doesn't need to be an issue. If you look at Monero, for instance, it has been hard fork like six times or even more, I can't recall. 
but it doesn't need to be an issue. And, uh, and, and in this particular case for Ethereum, I also do not agree that it's going to be a, a third uh, chain. No. Okay. Yeah, because a lot of people, and it's more of the people that want free coins. <laughs> I think that the people that just want free tokens without spending any money yeah. or investing their own money, I think they're the ones that are, are, are <laughs> in favor of a third you know, fork so they can get extra bonus coins. And <laughs> I, I don't believe that, I don't believe any of these baby coins that come out of the hard forks are, are extra value. I think that it steals value. It steals value. It steals time and it steals resources away from the original blockchain. Yeah. So like some people believe that, hey, you know, hold on to your Bitcoins and get free Bitcoins, free money. It's not free money. They're stealing and diluting the value of the original Bitcoin that Satoshi created. Mm -hmm. Now that, that's just my opinion, you know. So, um, all right. So on your channel, you said that you like to make, you know, learning crypto uh, entertaining, right? Yeah. And the, the reason why I brought you onto our channel is because, <laughs> I was, uh, you know, I, I always look at all the different channels and every year I always like to do a video about, you know, all the different channels that um, that are worth following, you know. And when I saw your channel, you know, it, it kind of stood out because it's like, man, you know, there's all these dozens of channels popping up and, and you just don't give a shit, you know, on, 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 on how you uh, uh, portray <laughs> yourself and stuff. And I'm like, hey, man, this guy's got the balls to do that, man. You know, yeah, not worry about what people think, you know, then then his his, you know, then it's worth taking a look at. You know, similar to Bitcoin Meister, you know, most of the stuff that he says about Bitcoin, I don't agree with, but I do agree with this. I agree that, you know, he's not just another echo chamber, that he mm -hmm. does give his commentary and his opinion on it. And, mm -hmm. and it's from a different perspective. And he's just not echoing what other people are saying out there uh, in, in crypto land. OK, so this is this is going to be a tough question for you. OK, so what, what are your top three favorite cryptos right now that, that you see, you know, that you like? Yeah. And, yeah but, uh, and, you know, if you're listening to this, it's not a buy or sell recommendation. No. It's just, you know, what this is just Levi's favorite, you know, like everybody yeah. has their favorites, you know. So yeah. what, what, what do you see as your three favorite that if you had more Bitcoins, you, you would get more of, you know? If I had more Bitcoins, then I will get some more Bitcoin. <laughs> I don't know. <even laughs> yeah, so that's, that's one of the three, huh? <laughs> that's one of the three. Um, then, uh, whew. Monero is also one of my favorites. Uh, Monero? Yeah, okay, I, 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 why? why? Uh, so, so, so the audience yeah. knows, why is Monero yeah. one of your favorites? Yeah. Okay, so um, I, I really think that privacy is something that is, uh, you know, is a right that everyone, everyone should have. Also, at a certain point of time, um, look at it of where the banks are heading to. They want to go to a cashless uh, environment. And uh, you have seen what is being done in India. Where a lot of uh, you know higher bill, how you say high, higher value bills have been uh, decommissioned. Also here in Europe, the five hundred uh, dollar bill has been decommissioned. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, also if you look at it from uh, let's say uh, pure uh, uh, technology perspective, mobile payments, according to Statista, is going to grow over time. And I think these steps are being taken also to uh, get rid of the cash, this, uh, uh, cash in general. Now, if you look at, for instance, if you, if you have another collapse of the financial system, I'm not going to be uh, trying to be conspiracy kind of guy at this point of time. But if you were in the situation of the people in Greece and in the situation of the people in Cyprus, where all of a sudden you cannot get access anymore, to the bank and you've lost all your cash and cash value has no uh, cash has no, no value anymore i think it's also good to be in these type of coins where you are really you know really disentangled from from the system and um, not only that also from from a corporate perspective and then yeah then you might argue if monero would be the good choice or zcash would be the better choice if you would do let's say um, corporate transactions or in general, if you have a company, some 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 funds just need to be how do you say it private need to be private from that sense. So um, yeah, that that's why I I I so love. So why why okay? I, I heard you mention the privacy coins, and you mentioned yeah. uh, uh, Monero, and then Zcash. Mm -hmm. Is or, or what about the other privacy coins? Do they not have value in your eyes, or do they not matter, or? Yeah. Uh, well, what made you focus? Because there's 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 Komodos, there's a Zen Cash, there's yeah. Article, there's 
uh, Cloak Coin. There's there, there's several others that you can. Yeah. There's dozens of them. Yeah. Uh, there's yeah. Verge. That's a new up and comer. So so what made yeah. you focus on these specific uh, privacy coins and not the other ones? Yeah. So I didn't uh, diversify a lot because at at this point of time I'm 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 invested enough. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And and if I diversify, of course, I do it a little bit with 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 smaller amount for for for, for my situation. But the thing that I like from Monero and others have that a little bit as well is that the main focus is, let's say, the privacy. If you look at Dash, for instance, or Pivx, uh, you have, let's say, the option to make it private. But here at, at uh, Monero, it's the other way around. It is, uh, well, it's, it's private. That's it. It's, it's private by default is what you're by saying. Default. Exactly. Thanks. Thanks. I was looking for the English word. Yeah. OK. OK. Yeah. So you said, you know, first was Bitcoin, get more yeah. Bitcoins. And you said, second, yeah. you like Monero and, and yeah. Zcash, which are the privacy coins that you like. Is yeah. there a third yeah. one that you like? Yeah, 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 yeah. OK, people might hate me now, but I don't care because. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. The way that you introduce yourself on your channel, I don't think that if some of the things that you give a shit, I think that they're at yeah. the wrong yeah. place. Yeah, exactly. But in the end, it's all about making money. No, yeah, that, that's we don't. I'm, I'm glad that you say that because, like, sometimes I wonder why people even, you know, get into crypto. Like, you know, like we make it very clear why we're in crypto. We're here to make life changing money, life changing yeah. profits. Okay, yeah. we're not a technology channel. We're not yeah. a philosophy channel. We're not trying to change the world. You know, you know yeah. how you change the world, make more money. <laughs> exactly. You know, you know, I've made more changes to the environment and to the people around me by having more money by not yeah. being broke. Yeah. You know, so, all right, so which is the one that you think that people are going to uh, throw tomatoes at you at? <laughs> oh, <laughs> ripple, I mean, uh, but. Oh, Ripple? Ripple, ripple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but, but for the, for the, for the, and this is, this, this is important for the, for the, for the midterm. So for the midterm, I guess with Ripple, there is still a lot of gain. Purely because it's a company that is already has you know hundred plus uh, cu customers, and they are really a company that's having revenue, and in a, in in a segment uh, that it has a lot of money. I mean, uh, and and that's the only reason I'm. Uh, you know, you were asking for three. Of course, I have a little bit more papers, but you know, now at this point of time, I think there's still uh, some money to make with Ripple. Okay. Um, actually, you know, in, in the, you know, we have a video series called uh, Typhoon Mistakes and some of the mistakes that we made along yeah. the way. And yeah. I haven't had a chance to make it yet, but that is actually one of the video topics I was going to make a video about. One of the mistakes that we made on our team, you know, is yeah. Ripple. Yeah. It's because it's a private blockchain and we saw no, like, value in that. Um, but the thing that we, the mistake that we made Right, is that you can't beat you, you, you can't you cannot overlook the fact that a project has customers. Exactly. You know, any project that has paying customers has more value than any project that has just a piece of white paper. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Because that's like in business, that's like the hardest thing to do is to get somebody to give you money and pay you. Yeah. So if you have a project that's got customers, like people laugh when we talked about Factum, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, uh, and it's a, uh, um, a project out of the city of Austin, Texas. And the thing that we made an investment thesis or investment case for is, hey, they got customers. You yeah. know, they got working software and they got customers. Yeah. So you can't knock a project when they have working software and they got customers. And it's not just any type of customer. It's, uh, you know, when they have somebody like the Department of Homeland Security yeah. willing to pay them. And this is like, this is not like your average mom and pops next door. You know what exactly. I'm saying? This is a government, you know, a law enforcement agency that, you know, so you can't be bullshitting them, right? You can bullshit other people, but the last people you want to go bullshit is the law enforcement agencies that can put you in jail for bullshitting them. Okay. So to me, you know, that, that right there confirms that, you know, to me, it's a legit project when you can get a government law enforcement agency, right, yeah. to buy your product. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They're not going to come in and buy a, a, a scam product or a bullshit product. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So yeah. I'm not saying that you know everything that the government buys is good, 
But the last thing you want to do is go pitch your crypto project to a government law enforcement law enforcement agency. You know, yeah. that's like we have a uh, when we uh, uh, hired an attorney to um, uh, a securities attorney to uh, um, to uh, oversee what you know to review everything that we do, all our products and our services. You know, mm -hmm. like you know our free stuff on YouTube and stuff. Like we don't you know care too much about that, but the stuff that people give us money for, you know. Uh, and invest in our like you know home study course, our, our cryptocurrency investing blueprint, or they come to our our uh, you know four day uh, boot camp training, you know our cryptocurrency investing boot camp. Mm -hmm. You know we have our securities lawyer sit in there and make sure everything we do and say is in compliance with U.S. regulations. And you know when when we first you know look for one, my uh, uh, my uh, business partners, you know they were like, hey, let's just get an attorney. I said, no, we don't just get another attorney. We need to hire a Securities lawyer that used to work for the SEC, or, and even better, if we can get one that you know used to work for, as uh, for the for the uh, Department of Justice as a prosecutor or somebody, and that's yeah. who we brought on to to over you know to review everything, all the products and services we have to make sure that we're in you know compliance with U.S. regulations, you know, and 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 that way you know you know he you know he, hey you can't say this or you can't do this and you know we're like oh okay you know because we don't know the law you know so we need somebody that's yeah. on that side in law enforcement to let us know so we'll make sure that we're in compliance so yeah. whenever people you know laugh about these different things you know the, the, the other mistake uh i i think we we made also levi with ripple like you mentioned is that we did not take into account that that you know the banks and all the financial institutions they're not going to go and put their business on a public blockchain. Like they're exactly. not, that's, that's not as much as we want them to. And as much yeah. as, you know, it's our fantasy that if they do that, it'll increase the value of Bitcoin and everything. The reality is they are be, you know, they have to report to shareholders and to board members. They, there's no way they can take their business and go put it on a public network. They have yeah. to put it on a private network. Yeah. They, 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 and, and that was something that we overlooked. You know, like, hey, you know, like, you know, realistically, if, if you and I own a, a bank and we have shareholders that we have to report to, we have to file with the SEC, you know, quarterly reports on what we're doing and everything. And we have to report to law enforcement and everything. There's no way that we can take that risk, that legal risk of taking our entire business and putting it on a public blockchain. Exactly. So they so and, and that's the mistake that we made. So I'm, I'm glad I, I agree with you on Ripple. I, yeah. I do agree with you on Ripple. You yeah. know, so. Um, oh, and just to make sure, right, we have to disclose this to our audience, right? You're not being paid by uh, 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 Monero or, <laughs> or, or Zcash or Ripple to say, to give you uh, no, opinions. No, 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 of course not. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, just to make sure, you know. independent, man. Yeah, okay. So, you know, if you're not, you know, I don't care. Just, you know, if you are, we want to make sure that, you know. So yeah. I, I always tell my audience that if you hear me talking about it on our channel, just assume that we invest in it. Exactly. Same you know here. Same. So, yeah. so, all right. So, um, let's take some questions from the audience here. Uh, mm -hmm. If you guys have any questions, uh, just leave it in the uh, chat box, and then I'll get um, uh, Levi to answer it. Mm -hmm. um, let me see. So, some of these uh, uh, ICOs that you guys are bringing up, um, I'm not familiar with it. You know, what I'm saying so. I can't even comment on it because there's so many that's coming out. You know. <clears throat> Okay, so Denny uh, Blocklin, um, if, when you guys put the questions in, can you also put the city that, or the country that you guys are asking the question from so we have an idea of uh, who's listening in on us, right? So Denny Blocklin, he asked um, if, if you can share like maybe some of the big mistakes that you made in crypto, you know, outside of like the cloud mining, uh, where are mm -hmm. some of the other mistakes that you made that, the, uh, that, that our audience can learn from? In crypto or in life? <laughs> uh, well, hey, hey, the, 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 yeah, just, uh, you know, share, share some of the big mistakes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, in my opinion, if whenever you make a mistake, it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, it is a mistake. You always learn something from it. Yeah. And um, the, the first big mistake that cost me a lot of money was, was once that I was... Uh, you know, I, I used to be a DJ also in the past, and I uh, used to, uh, how do you say, organize some gigs. And at a certain point of time, I, it was getting bigger and bigger, so I thought I was going to organize a gig in a bigger city. And in a bigger city, uh, I didn't do my uh, research pretty well, 
and um, I was throwing out a, a house music party, but it seems to be a urban R and B uh, joint at a certain point of time. So I lost like you know a uh, five figure number, and uh, what I learned there was that um, that um, how do you say it? This was not my thing anymore, you know, um, living the, the, the nightlife. And that's what I've learned from it. So uh, it also, you know, put my focus on other things. It was a, you know, expensive lesson. But yeah, that's what, one of the first lessons. Then in crypto, um, I think um, selling off my desk instead of uh, buying a master note. <laughs> 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 that was the biggest mistake. That was yeah. the biggest, biggest mistake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I would agree with that. You know, um, I, I should have gotten a master node when it was low enough to buy one. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that would have been very nice. That, that would have been a yeah. good, nice residual income. Exactly, exactly. It's now we're giving, paying out like 6K per month. You know, it's, it's always good. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so l l let me ask you this, right? Um, let me ask you this. Uh, so that that's one of your life lessons and and and, and crypto lessons. Well, well what else? Uh, uh, are, are those the biggest lessons, uh, mistakes that you made, or uh, is there anything else? Uh, hey, well. did, did, uh, Denny Blockland is actually the guy who asked the question. He's actually from the Netherlands. Oh, I see. Yeah, Gouda, yeah. the cheese yeah, from, city, cheese city, the best cheese in the world. You know, the best cheese in the world comes from Gouda. You know that, huh? or not, Thai? No, I don't, I'm not a big fan of cheese because I'm lactose intolerant, man. And man, cheese makes me dizzy. It makes me throw up and fart and all kinds of well, shit, man. But it's yeah. funny that he brings up Gouda because I actually also wanted to start once a cheese business for the for the U.S. market and the Indian market and the Chinese market because also with my let's say this the marketing background, I saw that there's a lot of uh, how do you say it. Uh, uh, search volume coming from this country. So everybody who wants to start up a business in cheese, you can steal the business. I still have a domain. <laughs> you can yeah. Do <laughs> Man, dude, that, that, I'm not a picky eater, you know. I grew up in the refugee camps in Malaysia after our yeah. family left Vietnam. And I can tell you, man, I'm not a picky eater, man. But there's one food item that I don't eat, and that is cheese, man. <laughs> like, every time. I go order a cheeseburger. They always put cheese on it because they can't imagine somebody ordering a burger with no cheese. Every time I order pizza, I don't want cheese on there, and they can't. They put cheese on it anyway because it's like it, it's. Uh, it, they're so stuck on people eating pizza with cheese that they can't imagine somebody would walk in and order pizza without cheese. You know, so. But that's the thing, right. Ty. That's the thing. Sorry, I need to interrupt you on this one. If you're in the Netherlands, you'll get some Gouda cheese, and you will maybe change your mind on it because that is the difference between cheese and cheese. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, 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 Luciana Valdez from Miami, right, mm. uh, asked, uh, uh, why haven't uh, you guys uh, spoken about IOTA and the Tango technology? Uh, you know, you guys come from the NXT community yeah. and all the potential disruption. Okay, so I'll probably have to answer this one because it's more directed towards me, you know. But yeah. so the founder. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 yeah, the, 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 I actually know the, the, the founder of IOTA. Uh, one of them is David uh, uh, Sustaban. Uh, mm -hmm. He and I, uh, we actually, um, he was actually one of the original guys. There was four of us that set up the, um, the uh, uh, no, no, not four guys. There's like five or six of us that, that set up the NXT Foundation to help promote the NXT. It was myself. It was uh, uh, another guy named Bass uh, uh, Whistling. He's also from the ne Netherlands. Yeah. And uh, uh, Evil Dave, he's also from the Netherlands. And then um, it was David Sustaban from the uh, IOTA, uh, the, one of the founders. And then there was Max Kordek, who's also the founder of Lisk. So we were all the, the, the group. And then there's a couple of more guys that's in the background that started the NXT Foundation. And then before it got settled, they splintered off. Uh, Max went off and did some other stuff, and then David went off and then did some other stuff, and then eventually uh, Max went and did Lisk, and then David went and did uh, IOTA. Um, I contacted him like a few weeks ago, uh, actually, to uh, you know bring them onto the channel and talk about IOTA, but it's, it's just a scheduling issue. You know, uh, it's a scheduling issue. It's a time issue. Um, 
one of these days when we have uh, both our schedules line up, then we'll bring them on and we can talk about that. So um, let me see. Um, okay, so there's a bunch of commentary about people investing into BitConnect. I yeah. mean, have you invested into that or are you familiar with that or do you have any yeah. commentary on that? I am familiar with it, but I'm not invested in it. Um, to be honest, I see that some people are making good money on it. But if you look at, uh, at their program, it, it, it really looks like a pyramid Ponzi scheme. In the end, these uh, type of companies will get caught. It might take years and years and years, and you might make a lot of money, but in the end, it, it, it will get shut down. And I, I, you know, I also have my own company and, and all that. I do not want to be, get involved in these kind of things. Yeah, so um, we've made you know, hundred, hundreds of videos on crypto. And there's only one video that we've ever made where we accuse a crypto of being a scam. And that was one coin. Mm, right? Exactly. You know what happened with that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and we, we made a video about it. And it's actually one of uh, it's probably the number one, probably the, the most popular uh, 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 one coin video out there. So if you mm. Google, you know, like, uh, is one coin a scam? You know, our video pops up. And the funny thing about it is that we made this video and told every, the whole community to stay away from it uh, and everything <clears throat> long before the European financial authority started investigating it, right? And now all the law enforcement agencies are, are investigating it, okay? So now I, I want to make it clear so that, our, uh, uh, that everyone's listening know, okay? When you accuse, when, 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 when we call something a scam, like this word scam is thrown around in the, in the crypto community more so than probably any other sector or any business sector or business industry. Like everything is a scam. Like every coin that comes out has been accused of a scam at least a dozen times. The problem with people making scam accusations is that they never tell you the factual information that makes it a scam. Okay. And what makes something a scam is when there is a misrepresentation, there is a fraud, there is theft. You know, there has to be some kind of, of, in my opinion, some kind of law that was broken to make it a scam for that country, right? You can't just call something a scam, right? People run around calling this crypto a scam, that crypto. And we don't do that. There's only one crypto that we've ever called a scam, and that was one coin. And the reason why we were comfortable in calling it a scam, right? Because we don't want somebody to come back and sue us for defamation or saying bad things about them that's not true, right? So mm -hmm. that, that was the reason why we wanted to go out to the Iceland and inspect the, uh, the, um, the mining, the Genesis mining facility. Because yeah. some people call it a scam, some people say it's not a scam, you know, we just want to go see it for ourselves. And then that way we can make an accurate video about it. But mm -hmm. one coin we said was a scam because the scam is that they are misrepresenting what they do and who they are. They are saying that they are a cryptocurrency, but you cannot find a blockchain or a block explorer for them. Mm. They're saying that they're the most traded you know, coin, but you don't see them listed on any of the major exchanges. So the scam in one coin is that it's a misrepresentation. You're saying one thing, but you're actually something else. You're saying A, but you're actually B. That's, where, that's what makes it a scam. Like a lot of people say that, oh, so-and-so coin is a scam just because they don't like it. This is just their personal opinion. Right? So we're always hesitant to say that. Now, if we were doing research on, on, on BitConnect, right, to get back to BitConnect here, it was very hard for us to find factual information on it. Like on some of the stuff that they claim, right? I don't know about the Netherlands, but in the US, right, when, when you make a claim, uh, especially if you're a public figure and you make a claim, you have to be able to back it up. If you're a company and you're saying, "Hey, my product or my service does this," you have to be able to make you have to be able to back that up. Yeah, it's the same. Okay. Yeah. yeah so in some countries you don't have to do that, but in America, you know, uh, 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 for consumer protection and for fraud protection, you know, you you have to, you know, uh, be able to back up your claims. Okay. So uh, because of that. We, uh, um, we haven't made a video about uh, 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 BitConnect yet, simply because when we research it and we look at all the people that do talk about BitConnect, they're not people that we would quote unquote trust. 
in real life. I'm not naming names or anything, but I'm just saying that the people that you see is not, they're not coming from a, the information that's being provided about BitConnect is not coming from what I would consider a reliable source. Make sense? You know, so I, I just, that, that's, that's, that's why we do not invest in it. We don't recommend our audience to invest in it, to it because the source of the information about BitConnect is just, we don't believe it to be a credible source. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't know what, what your thoughts on it are. I can only agree with you, uh, Ty, on this one. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. all right. Um, What's your thoughts on uh, Roy Volkers from the Netherlands also? You got a lot of fans from the Netherlands here. On this show today, man. Um, he wants to know what your opinion is on rivets. Uh, they just completed their ICO recently, yeah. and it just got, I think, listed on HIT BTC. So do yeah. you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think um, security is one of the main priorities, and especially with uh, new technologies emerging. And uh, I think they have something very unique with um, with with rivets, with uh, how do you say it? Does, does let's say hardware security instead of software security? Um, of course, it has not been very hyped, and uh, you also see that now with the IC, uh, the the post ICO price. But um, if you look at it long term, also yeah, they are let's say a working company. They also have some contracts in place with uh, with Homeland Security as well, I guess. Huh? Yeah, exactly. And uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure on that one, but it's a. Uh, um, I like to. I always like projects mm. that 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 are going out there to get customers, to get users. Yeah. yeah. You know, people sometimes people live in fantasy land. Uh, you know, and they forget that in order for a software, a product, or a service to succeed, it needs users. It needs customers. Yeah. You know, and, and people forget that. Yeah. People forget that. You know, hey. You know, anytime you put out a product or service out in the market, you need users. If you don't have any users or customers, the product and service is not good to anyone. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So the ability to get customers and users is extremely important uh, from my perspective. You know, yeah. like before I invest into a project, like and and so the the CEO of of um, Rivet, you know, he comes from the traditional world where that was his role before was to get users and customers. Mm -hmm. You know, so he's familiar with that. He knows that. You know, from our discussions, he's fully aware that they need to get customers to use it. Yeah. You know, so um, so Paul Barrett uh, asked, uh, what was the last two coins that you bought? And what's the last two coins that I bought? Paul Barrett, good to see you here on the show. Uh, always a, a loyal follower. Always, okay, correcting, okay. always correcting my incorrect English grammar. So thanks a lot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the last coins that I bought, uh, I, I guess it was during the dip. I bought multiple uh, when the market cap dropped to 98, uh, how do you say it, uh, billion. I bought multiple, but um, I bought um, metal on the dip. And what else did I bought back then? I bought the shitload. Uh, I I strengthened my position in Omise Go. Omise Go, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, I, I I like Omise Go, but I passed it up because of the uh, uh, Omise Go and Quantum. You know, it makes sense. You know, but I, I passed it up because I'm not paying two hundred million dollar valuation for jack shit. That is for a piece of white paper. I'm not like if you look at the traditional VC world, like if you go to mm -hmm. uh, Silicon Valley or you go to Wall Street and you have an idea for a product or service, nobody gives you fucking two hundred million dollars. True. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that, there's nothing that you can do as the startup. There's nothing that you could absolutely do with two hundred million dollars that makes sense. Like they give you like half a million dollars, go build the prototype and bring it back, and then we'll give you some more money. And then they'll give you a million dollars. Go get a couple, one or two customers, and show us that you can do that. And we'll give you some more money. Nobody gives you two hundred million dollars, you know. Welcome Nobody to does that. The ICO world. Yeah, welcome <laughs> to the ICO world. Well, you know what? You know, I, I could be wrong. You know, I've been wrong before, but I'm going to take my chances with the, the smaller valuation uh, 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 projects. Yeah. You know. No, no. I I, I chose chose for Omise Go also that they have also a big customer base in the Asia Pacific region. Yeah, uh, and I, I I chose I have chosen for metal um, because also looking at the at the growth rate in the coming years for the for the cannabis industry because they are focusing yeah. on, on that sector, 
uh, the, the medical cannabis industry and the, the legal cannabis industry in, in the US is growing and growing. So it's a billion dollar market. They already have, uh, let's say, 200 customers that intend to use. <laughs> <it>. <laughs> yeah. No, but, uh, but the forecast is that they are going to do, let's say, 200 million transactions and for next year is going to reach to a billion. And these type of companies, like also, let's say, porn business related companies, just to name some taboo kind of uh, sectors, they have issues with getting into, let's say, financial, um, uh, how do you say it, services. And I think uh, it might be a fair chance uh, for them to, uh, to use uh, these services of blockchain technologies like Metal. So that's, okay. that's why I got into Metal. Yeah. Okay. Metal, are you talking about Metal as far as the crypto metal or the uh, precious metals? I also have precious metals, but now I'm, I'm talking about uh, <laughs> the crypto metal. Okay, yeah, okay, okay, okay. All right, I just want to make sure that you, you clear that up. Oh, and by the way, you have uh, precious metals, always. Yeah, uh, yeah. The Danny Blockland uh, uh, brought up uh, an interesting fact. He said that Bitcoin is up like 5% during this video broadcast, you know? Nice. Man, if, if, <laughs> if every time we have you on this channel, Bitcoin goes up 5%, Levi, we need to bring yeah, you on yeah. every day, man. Of course, of course. <laughs> I need to load up on Bitcoins and bring you on every day. <laughs> sure, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, man. Okay, so um, my uh, my last two crypto that I bought was in the. I'm not gonna say like uh, the. So we organize all the cryptos into what Leon and I we organize into what we call buckets. You know, like Zen Cash, like Monero, Dash, Pivx. Uh, Zcash, uh, Particle, things like that, that goes in the privacy coin bucket because they're, they're, they're focused on privacy, even though Dash is starting to lean away from that, you know, mm -hmm. and become more of a currency than a, uh, a, a privacy, you know, coin. So the, I don't, whenever people ask me what's my favorite coins, I actually let them know that I focus on more on what's my favorite buckets, my crypto buckets. And the two buckets that I've been getting into is the gaming bucket, the decentralized uh, yeah. uh, video gaming bucket and then the decentralized uh, gambling uh, bucket because those are two arenas that I believe are have huge friction. You know, people want to make bets on certain things, you know, and use smart contracts to do that without getting the house, giving the house an edge. So, you know, things like edgeless, you know, V slice, uh, things like that. I've been looking at those, getting into those uh, while the price is falling. I've been getting into those just so that. I have a position in the, uh, like, you know, mobile go game credits, you know, those are in the video yeah, game section. Yeah. So I just want a little bit in each bucket so that if that bucket, you know, hits big, I, I want to be in that bucket. Okay. So, that's, yeah. um, so, um, when, uh, whatchamacallit asked if there, what's the last two I bought, I wouldn't say that it's necessarily a specific coin, but it's those two buckets that I'm looking at, you know, and then the next bucket that I'm uh, that we're doing heavy research and putting a lot of money into the research right now is the uh, the decentralized social media and the decentralized content creation bucket, right? And um, uh, we recently put out some videos where we went to New York City to test out some uh, software and ICO software. And by the way, at the time that we released that video, we weren't. Um, uh, able to disclose the name of the project, but I can, you know, disclose it now, you know, it's uh, the uh, props project uh, that is created by the younow.com, by the video streaming, uh, live streaming software project, $60 million a month in revenues and sales, and they have, you know, 40 million registered users. So they have a huge base there, and we're gonna be putting out more videos uh, about them here uh, uh, shortly, okay? so. Um, let me see here. So, all right. So I don't see any more questions, uh, coming in, uh, for you, uh, uh, Levi. So let's yeah. go ahead and wrap this up. You know, uh, we hit our hour mark anyways, you know, yeah. um, so <laughs> thanks for coming on to our channel and sharing your thoughts and your experience and some of the mistakes that you made for our audience. And, you know, uh, I'm sure that they'll learn from that. Right. And, um, uh, uh, you know, I look forward to having you back. Yeah, you know, in the future, always. Maybe, always. I, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, so. I'm, I'm very honored that you have uh, 
reached out to me initially, Ty. I was like, what the fuck? Why does Ty Sam want to have me in your show? But uh, yeah, I'm a- Well, here's, here's the thing, you know, we have so many people out there on YouTube that are just uh, what we consider like, you know, echo chambers. Yeah. You know, they're, they're just regurgitating what somebody else said, or they just, you know, just, just they don't have their own personal opinion. And I think the value that we want to bring to our audience is that people who have their unique personal opinion, you know, um, so, um, the, uh, the name of the project that I just mentioned, um, is from a company called you now.com, uh, you as in, uh, me and you, and then now as in right now, you now.com. And if you go to their website at the top, it'll say props, uh, by you now read more and you, you can follow that. Okay. So, um, we, um, we, uh, 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 okay, Mr. Crypto asked, what's a pickle yeah, yeah. chamber, right? Oh. Uh, I, I did not say pickle chamber, I said echo. Like, you know, when you're in a mountain canyon and you say some, hello, 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 hello. You know, there's an echo of my voice. So, you know, a lot of broadcasters on YouTube, they just, uh, you know, just repeat what other people say instead of giving their personal opinion. And I think that the value in, in, in your channel and somebody like Bitcoin Meister's channel is that, you know, I don't have to agree with your opinions or your commentary, but it's your opinions and your commentary and it's not a regurgitation of somebody else's opinion or, 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 or commentary. And I think that's where the value is. So we always try to introduce our audience to other channels that we believe that, hey, you know what, here's a different perspective. It doesn't mean we agree on it, but here's a different perspective and a different outlook on the same project than what we have, you know, because, you know, we don't believe that, you know, we're, we're, we're always right. And we don't believe that, you know, uh, 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 you know, um, the, you know, we know everything. So there's other people out there that cover different topics that we may not be aware of in our audience. You know, we're here to help our audience make life changing money, you know, so if introducing them to other channels with different perspectives allows them to do that then, you know, it's worthwhile for us to bring other people on, you know? And I also, I remember like, you know, like when, when I first started my channel and I try to get on other people's channel and, 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 and share my thoughts with them, you know, they, 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 they just ignore you and they, they act like they're too good for you, for you, you know, if you're a smaller channel or something like that, you know? And I'm like, man, that's bullshit, man. One of these days when our channel gets big enough, you know, I'll bring on the little guys and, or new people coming out, you know, and, and help them start their channel. You know what I'm saying? You're already so doing like, it, huh? You're already doing it. <laughs> you know, so I, I think, so if you guys uh, uh, like, you know, what Levi is saying here, go to his channel right there. He's got it on the screen, youtube.com slash user slash the famous DJ and <laughs> pound that subscribe button and pound that like button and, uh, and leave comments and let him know that you heard about his channel from our channel and say hello to him, check him out. He has a different opinion about it. Uh, about crypto than we do. He has a different approach to explaining crypto than we do. And check it out. And if it helps you make some life-changing money, by all means, uh, make sure you pound that like button and pound that subscribe button. So thanks for coming on, uh, Levi. And yeah, this will conclude uh, this will conclude the broadcast. And if you guys like these types of videos and you want to uh, learn more about what we're doing, go to www.cryptocurrency.market slash newsletter. It's spelled just like you hear it, no fancy spelling, right? www.cryptocurrency.market slash newsletter. And that's where we send out all our new broadcasts, okay? And um, we'll look forward to seeing you guys in a future uh, uh, video. And make sure you go to Twitter and follow uh, Levi on Twitter also, okay? It's right there on your screen so you don't spell it wrong. Exactly. All right, this concludes the broadcast, guys.